What's going on guys and welcome back to another video about Social Security. So I was just asked earlier on today, is Congress dodging Social Security in 2023? And that's actually a very good question. I want to address what's going on here because there are some more proposals. We're getting new information out of Congress, specifically the House of uh, the Representatives or the, the Republicans out of the House. They are saying that they are going to be delivering a budget pretty soon. This is actually going to be telling us to what we are going to see as far as cuts, how much more money could Congress potentially use, and all these other things. But let's address the one question. Is Congress and President Biden dodging Social Security in 2023? Well, in order to answer that question, I want to first go in, I want to play an interview that uh, Larry Kudlow had with uh, Senator Bill Cassidy. And he had this interview after Senator Bill Cassidy earlier on this week, uh, you know, did a thing in front of uh, Secretary Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, asking her why President Biden, and, and again, he's talked to many people as well, but why President Biden will not accept a meeting with a bipartisan group of senators to talk about Social Security. And she went on to say that for President Biden, Social Security is still a very uh, important piece but I want to play this for you. Look at this. It is an incredibly odd way because we made repeated um, requests to meet with them. Now, we can meet with staff, but when it comes to social, it has to be the president that makes the call. And if he's not meeting with us, it means he does not want to make the call. Let's touch on that for just a second. What is he saying? He's saying that the President Biden is the only one that he can meet with. That right there is not 100% true. Okay. Uh, Republicans can meet with, you know, President Biden, Democrats can do the same thing. But what's actually happening, and we've seen a lot of reports on this, because uh, it's the same thing every single year, is lawmakers usually go and talk to the staff, the White House staff. Then at that point, once the discussions start going, then they go and talk with the president. Or if you are, a, you know, a, you know, one of the main members of the president's party, Chances are you don't got to go and talk to staff. You can talk directly to the president. However, it does seem like President Biden is trying to push this responsibility off to somebody else. Well, why would they do that? Or why is he doing that? We've got many reports on this over the past few weeks, really over the past month or so, but more so over the past few weeks, where lawmakers are now questioning whether or not the other party wants to pass anything for Social Security. And again, we've seen this happen before when we were... Uh, we had uh, uh, what uh, Steve Mnuchin uh, talking and trying to negotiate with, uh, at the time, uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She made it seem like, yeah, let's negotiate. But the whole time she's negotiating, she knew there's no way they were going to accept a bill. And now lawmakers are questioning whether or not this is the exact same thing. And it almost seems like it. Let's go on and listen to more of his interview. By the way, he's not submitted a plan. And, Senator, and Secretary Yellen, in a later part, said they effectively said they had not yet modeled uh, just making people over four hundred thousand dollars pay for Social Security. Huh. They've done nothing on Social Security, including not actually meeting with us. Well, so let's touch on that for a second. So he says that Democrats have not even submitted a plan, and to be one hundred percent frank with you guys, it's true. There is no plan. There is no plan for Social Security from the Democrats. There, there's nothing. They, they just say we need to, uh, we need to raise taxes, right? That again, it's discussion. It's not a proposal. It's not a plan. It's not a bill. But at the same time, what have Republicans proposed, right? Have Republicans proposed, uh, you know, uh, really much, you know, much else? They proposed, and yes, there are proposals that let's increase. Uh, let's increase the Social Security, uh, the full retirement age. Let's do that. And again, that's that's part of the issues and part of the discussions is Democrats don't want to come out and say, okay, let's negotiate from here. Because just saying that, okay, you want to raise the, the full retirement age for Social Security? Well, let's start there and let's let's figure out where we're at and let's come to the agreement in the middle. We haven't seen that. And so at this point, each party is pushing the responsibility over to the other, saying, well, you need, to pro you need to submit a proposal. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to work with this person or that person. That's creating a massive problem. Let's get right back into the interview. 
Well, what I gather from them, ap apart from the politics, which are very nasty, um, they want to raise taxes. That's the only partial solution to it. You, on the other hand, have a much more interesting solution. Please tell us about it. Yeah, so we had created a fund separate from Social Security, totally separate. And we'd invest in it and allow that money to be in a diversified portfolio. Yep. You know, think stock market. And it rises. Now, the risk is only on the fund. The beneficiary gets everything she's been promised. So she has no risk whatsoever. You hold it in escrow for 70 years, you allow the rate of return on the rate of return, and you're able to get to the point where you can bridge Social Security to where it actually works. Now, let me go and answer this question. He just said that what's going to happen is they're going to start a fund, and I believe it's like $1.3 trillion. They would have to borrow that money, and guess what? That means we're paying for it somehow. So we're going to borrow that money. We're going to put it into a, a, like an escrow account, and it's going to grow you know, based off whatever return it gets. So let's say it gets invested into the stock market. Okay. Well, it's going to grow for the next 70 years. What does that mean for tomorrow? What does that mean for 10 years, 20 years from now? We don't know. We have no clue what's going to go on there. Right? We don't know what's going to happen. But then he also says that there's no risk to the beneficiary. And again, there, there's no risk to the beneficiary. Here's where it becomes risky. Essentially what he's saying is, and again, I think there's, some, there's a, a little bit that we can take from this proposal. We can work with it and try to figure out how we can get closer to coming up with a deal. But again, I want to know your thoughts as well. But he goes on to say, uh, and he talks about how, well, there's no risk to the beneficiary. And that's true. As long as the money's there for that fund and it continues to grow and grow and grow, right? Then yes, at some point, it's going to be fully funded and we can just live off of that interest. But again, we got to wait 70 years. What happens if we go and invest into the stock market, let's say today, and we see the stock market just sell off? And our $1.3 trillion or whatever they, they're planning then goes to, say, $800 billion. And we lose $500 billion almost immediately. Well, guess what? It's going to take that much longer to get to where we eventually want to go. But let's listen to what else he has to say. Now, that's our goal. We'd bring that to the president. There's other things you might have to do. Those are subject to negotiation. But this is the core. Point is, this is a market-oriented approach, point number one. You can make use of the good multiples. I mean, it stocks for the long run. Jeremy Siegel, Burt Malkio, they've all been on this show. Point number two, as I understand it, you're saying, okay, if the market stuff doesn't work, you're still going to be guaranteed. But if the market stuff does work, over time, you'll shuttle those returns into the system for the beneficiaries. Is you'll that right? allow a rate of return for a period of time. You get the doubling effect, the rule of 72. Mm -hmm. And so at the end, it looks like a tulip because the fund grows, 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 and then it just really grows. And you hold it in escrow until it hits that point, and then you pay off everything that you've had to borrow. So let's touch on that for a second. So what he's just saying is we're going to borrow money. We're going to let it grow, 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 grow for, let's say, 70 years or the rule of 72, right? And then eventually it turns into a tulip and has all this money. And then they're going to go, go pay back the money that they borrowed. And then all the rest of the money should be enough to keep Social Security solvent, right? Well, here's the problem. What if it doesn't go as to plan? Well, we just borrowed money. And so this is where, again, I think this is... This has some, there's some merit behind the idea, but here's where things get interesting. How do you fund that? So this is something that Democrats are gonna say, well, okay, but you've been saying for the longest time that what we need to do is we need to uh, reduce our deficit. We can't continue to spend. Well, where does that money come from? This is where that negotiation is gonna go. And, and I believe this is why lawmakers are not really jumping on board with this is because where is that money going to come from? Well, it's going to come from cuts. We have to make cuts. And so again, I bring this up because it's, it's interesting that Republicans are, are proposing this, that why would they want to, to propose a bill that essentially they have to go and make more cuts? Well, it's part of the entire plan. Same thing with Democrats. So they don't want to make cuts. 
They want to continue to spend, but they're going to tax the wealthy. So if they're going out on one side and got Republicans coming out on another side, trying to meet in the middle is going to be extremely difficult. Let's go on to listen a little bit more of what he has to say. To pay those benefits and maybe even you forever take care of the fund. Do you have to borrow for the escrow fund? You do have to borrow for the escrow Initially. fund. Initially. Yes. And that would, I don't want too many details, but you'd say some chunk would have to be borrowed. And this would be run by trustees. Correct. Right? Totally arms, uh, arms, arms length. Arms length from the system itself, arms length from the politicians, arms length from everything. Yes. And you penalize anybody who tries to mess with it. So, he just said that if somebody tries to mess with this fund, they would be penalized. How so? Well, I don't think he goes into detail, but let's listen. Uh, and you let the, and we would audit it every year and put those audits online so the American people can say, hmm, this looks like it's being run well. People like you would pour through it to make sure that it was really being run well. Now, I think that's enough with that interview, but here's something else that was part of that bill or part of that proposal. If for some reason, the rate of return for the fund is not what it needs to be to continue to grow. What it said, okay, according to the, all the reports that I've read, this proposal would actually mean that we can go and raise taxes on the American people in order to uh, make up the difference of what we just lost from this fund. So essentially, they either do things right or, which if they do things right, you still have to pay a little bit more, probably in taxes because guess what? They borrowed the money. But if they don't do things right, you still have to pay more because guess what? It didn't return what it needs to do to be able to fully fund itself to eventually go and pay social security benefits. Again, I don't know where they go from here. And this is part of the problem is, I think a lot of lawmakers are, are pushing different ideas out there knowing full well that there is no way anyone's gonna vote in favor of it. So, what happens now? Well, here's where things are at right now. As of today, we did hear from uh, uh, Speaker Kevin McCarthy and we heard that the, the fiscal year 2024 budget coming from the House Republicans, this is still on track, but it's gonna be a little bit delayed. Interesting, still on track, but a little bit delayed. It's gonna be delayed until after uh, April 15th, actually after April 17th. But what they want to do is they want to cut $130 billion from domestic agency accounts just for next year. They also want to, uh, and this is again for fiscal year 2024, they also are proposing capping the spending at 1% growth annually for the next 10 years. And again, this is part of the issue, is they want to provide, and this again was coming from House Republicans, they want to provide cuts to you know certain uh, certain domestic uh, accounts, but as to what are those cuts, we still don't know. We do know that Senator Bernie Sanders and other other senators still want to include that two hundred dollar monthly uh, increase for Social Security beneficiaries. They do believe that seniors are getting hit the hardest with inflation, still at six percent. They say food costs are through the roof, and the problem is many seniors lost a majority of their SNAP benefits just last month. So. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, but what I can tell you is the facts are pointing to that lawmakers, yes, are trying to dodge Social Security. Some uh, some reports, they, they do state that lawmakers would, even though they're saying that 2023 is a year for Social Security, if they can push the blame on the other party, it would look like their party was actually doing something. So. And I just want to warn you, even though they're saying 2023 is a year of Social Security, there's a chance we may not see anything done until after the 2024 elections. So we're over a year away. This could be devastating to millions of people, but it could also make it even that much more difficult to get anything passed for Social Security after. And it would all depend on the elections. So that's what we know at this time. As always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back on and share all the latest news and updates again. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing. I'll see you guys on the next one.